Some people would like to boycott Israel. Okay, it's time for Wretched. It's moronic! Would you consider yourself to be a good dog? We're on fire! You're sort of ruining the mood. You're intolerant, judgmental, and narrow-minded. You're everything that's wrong in this world. Oh, law, gospel. Jesus paid it all. Who could ask for anything more? Hello, and welcome to our Wretched. My name is Todd Friel. I am your host, the Wretch. The song refers to... Uh, the Arab League would like to boycott Israel. Nope, not kidding. And if you think that's a knee slapper, some pro <laughs> Protestants even thought about joining them. Why? Those bad Jewish people, they're so mean. All they do is make havoc wherever they go. Oh, really? Uh, should we even be thinking about boycotting Israel if perhaps for some wacky reason that strikes you as a good idea? Well, okay, but as long as we're thinking about boycotting Israel, let's make sure we're not leaving any bad guys out. Boycott Israel if you think that's just But unless you have a double standard you must Also boycott the rest of the nations With allegations of human rights violations We're not perfect but if you think we're the worst First take a look at the rest of the earth Don't pick and choose to pick on the Jews Pick up the paper and read the news Boycott North Korea I don't think you'll see a country in the world That could be unfreer Boycott China let's not forget they stole the whole country of Tibet. Boycott Japan, slaughtering thousands of helpless innocent whales and dolphins. Boycott Vietnam, where they choose to use drug addicts and slaves to shell cash. Boycott Cambodia, grabbing up land, five million acres from the poor man's hand. Boycott Thailand, for shutting the door and deporting refugees back to the war. Boycott Burma, don't let your cash slip into the grip for that military dictator. To ship. Boycott India, women can't escape when the government officials are guilty of rape. Boycott Pakistan, crazy country where they execute people for blasphemy. And boycott Afghanistan, opium land where the poppy fields stand in the Taliban's hand. And boycott Israel if you think that's just. But unless you have a double standard, you must also boycott the rest of the nations where allegations of human rights violations were not perfect. But if you think we're the worst. First, take a look at the rest of the earth. Don't pick and choose to pick on the Jews. Pick up the paper and read the news. Boycott Syria, their government's killing thousands of innocent, unarmed civilians. Boycott Iraq, make them change the laws. They lock up and torture people without cause. Boycott Iran with the greatest rate of execution out of every other state. Boycott Turkey because they've always denied and lied about the army. Genocide. Yeah, as long as we're boycotting, let's not forget the atrocities of other nations. Are you familiar with the Armenian Genocide? No, this was not the killing of people who don't believe in the doctrine of election. The entire nation of Christians virtually wiped out. You know that whole Mediterranean area used to be predominantly Christian, used to be until give or take the 7th century Hmm. What happened around that time? Well, that was about the time Muhammad came along, supposedly wrote a book called the Quran, and started teaching people how to propagate the religion of peace by killing people or threatening to kill them if they do not convert. Otherwise, they could potentially stay alive and live in dimitude, maybe, but they couldn't exercise freedom of religion. They couldn't participate in business. They had to pay extra taxes. That is why the the coast of the Mediterranean and all of the nations connected to the Mediterranean Sea move from being Christian to being Islamic. Why? Because contrary to what our political leaders will tell us, sorry, their holy book tells me it's not really a religion of peace. However, people contest that statement and they say, well, there's a lot of Muslims who really are peaceful. And to that I would say, okay, I guess it depends on what your definition of peaceful is, is furthermore, when push comes to shove, with whom will the peaceful Muslims side? 
would like to share with you a clip that's a bit of a snoozer, I confess to you, but the Muslims, they don't quite have down the, the rallies the way that we Christians do. This is from Norway. This is an assembling of peaceful Muslims to let the world know exactly how peaceful they are. Every now and then, every time we have a conference, every time we invite a speaker, they always can come with the same accusations. This speaker supports death penalty for homosexuals. This speaker supports death penalty for this crime or this crime or that. He is homophobic. He, they subjugate women, etc., etc., etc. It's the same old stuff coming all the time. And we always try to tell them, I always try to tell them that, look, it's not that speaker that we're inviting who has these extreme radical views, as you say. These are general views that every Muslim actually has. Every Muslim believes in these things. Just because they're not telling you about it or just because they're not out there in the media doesn't mean they don't believe in them. So I will ask you, everyone in the room, how many of you are normal Muslims, you're not extremists, you're not radical, this is normal Sunni Muslims. Please raise your hands. Everybody, mashaAllah, subhanAllah. Okay, take down your hands again. How many of you agree that men and women should sit separate? Please raise your hands. Everyone agree. Everyone agree, brothers and sisters, subhanAllah. So, so it's not just these radical sheikhs then. Allahu Akbar. Next question. How many of you agree that the punishments described in the Quran and the Sunnah, whether it is death, whether it is stoning for adultery, whatever it is, if it is from Allah and His Messenger, that is the best punishment ever possible for humankind. And that is what we should apply in the world. Well, who, who agrees with that? Allahu Akbar. Are you all the radical extremists? SubhanAllah. So all of you are saying that you are common Muslims. You all go to the different massages in Norway. Or is it, are you like a specific sect? Like the Islam net sect or anything like that? Are you like that? No. Is it, are you like that? Please raise, your, please raise your hand if you like this extreme Islam, that sect or anything like that. No one. Allahu Akbar. How many of you just go to these normal mas masajids in Norway? Every, the normal Sunni mosques. Please raise your hands. <laughs> Those are your peaceful Muslims who admitted they're no different than those radical clerics. And they want to boycott Israel? This is Wretched. Take a dollop of sarcasm, mix it in with conservative theology, and voila, you have Wretched TV. So join the club. Visit Wretched.tv. Are the clips you're about to see current and relevant? No. But are they really, really sarcastic? Oh, yeah. Welcome back to Wretched. I realize that the Nairobi Mall massacre is no longer on the front page of any newspaper. However, when David Wood puts together a video reminding us why we see so many Islamic terrorist activity, it's always worth a gander. Uh, especially when he's being especially sarcastic. The only connection between the Nairobi Mall massacre and the nearly 22,000 other terrorist attacks committed in the name of Allah since the fall of the World Trade Center is that they all have absolutely nothing to do with Islam. Just ask world-renowned Quran scholar and British Prime Minister David Cameron. I think the other thing to remember is that these appalling terrorist attacks that take place uh, where the perpetrators claim they do it 
in the name of a religion. They don't. They do it in the name of terror, violence, extremism, and their warped view of the world. They don't represent Islam or Muslims in Britain or anywhere else in the world. So, jihadists think they're killing in the name of religion, and they think they represent Islam, but they're wrong. Now, where on earth did these horribly misguided Muslims get the ridiculous idea that Allah wants them to attack unbelievers? They got it from a book that apparently has nothing to do with Islam, the Quran. We open the Quran and what do we find? Fight those who do not believe in Allah, Surah 9, 29. Strive hard against the unbelievers and the hypocrites and be unyielding to them, Surah 9, 73. Fight those of the unbelievers who are near to you and let them find in you hardness, Surah 9, 123. Some Muslims read these perfectly clear commands from Allah and they assume that Allah means what he says, not realizing that as devout followers of Muhammad, they're supposed to let Prime Minister David Cameron interpret Allah's commands for them. Of course, we know how Muhammad interpreted these commands. He says in Sahih al-Bukhari 6924, I have been ordered to fight the people till they say, La ilaha illallah, there is no God but Allah. It seems that David Cameron fancies himself a higher authority on Islam than Muhammad. Perhaps we should start calling him Prime Messenger Cameron. By the way, what do I know about the Arabic language? I thought the La Ilaha Ilaha La 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 was actually a street on a Hawaiian island. What do, what, what, what do I know? But hey, at least it's only the British Prime Minister who's a wee bit confused about the Quran. I'm certainly glad we don't have a leader this deluded here in the U.S. And I consider it part of my responsibility as President of the United States to fight against negative stereotypes of Islam wherever they appear. Sadly, Prime Messenger Cameron and President Obama were nowhere to be found when the Quran was being revealed. So when Allah commanded Muhammad and his companions to start killing unbelievers, they started killing unbelievers, just like Al-Shabaab today. Mm -hmm. And the way that they do it is absolutely atrocious. I mean, not like, you know, murder is better in one form or another, but when they're wicked and cruel in the process, that makes it super special. Want to see how Islamic history has been repeating itself for nearly 14 centuries? During the Nairobi Mall massacre, the Muslim terrorists only wanted to kill unbelievers, so some of the shoppers tried pretending to be Muslims. But the terrorists weren't about to be fooled. They started asking Islamic trivia questions. What was Muhammad's mother's name? Her name was Amina, but if you didn't answer correctly, you were dead. Notice what we have here. We have people pretending to be Muslims, even though they're not really Muslims, because they're afraid of being killed by Muslims and there's nowhere for them to hide. If you study the Muslim sources, this should sound very familiar. In Surah 9, verses 56 and 57 of the Quran, we read about people during the time of Muhammad who were pretending to be Muslims because they were afraid of being killed by Muslims and they had nowhere to hide. Here's the passage. And they swear by Allah that they are most surely of you. They swear that they're Muslims. And they are not of you. They're not really Muslims. But they are a people who are afraid of you. They're people who are afraid of Muslims. If they could find a refuge or cave or a place to enter into, they would certainly have turned thereto, running away in all haste. If there were a place for these people to hide, they would run and hide. But they've been cornered, so they pretend to be Muslims in order to protect themselves. Why were they so afraid of the religion of peace? Because Muslims had been commanded in Surah 9, verse 5, when the sacred months have passed, slay the idolaters wherever you find them. Islam has a proud tradition of tolerance. Muhammad and his companions just didn't know that Islam is defined by modern Western leaders like Prime Messenger Cameron and President Obama. So they took Allah's commands very seriously. The unbelievers also took Allah's command seriously, which is why they said, don't kill us, we swear by Allah that we're Muslims. Just like the unbelievers in the Westgate Mall. Mm. And when they discovered that those people were not actually Muslims, 
Some of them were actually hung on hooks. Nice. Very nice. Once again, another massacre aimed at Christians. Do you realize that 80% of all the religious persecution that happens in the world is targeted at Christians? Did you know that? When was the last time you heard a news report that shared that statistic with you? When was the last time you heard our president express concern about what is happening to the Christians around the globe, and yet... Whenever there is a bombing, whenever there's an explosion, whenever there's a supposed, maybe possibly terrorist activity, what are the first words out of his mouth? Hey, it's not Islamic. There's nothing to see here, folks. Show's over. But Muhammad didn't ask trivia questions to test their sincerity. The Prophet of Allah had a different kind of test. He'd send them into battle. You're Muslim? Great. Go fight the Romans. If you refuse, you're busted. That's why jihad is the ultimate test of a Muslim's faith. It's why Muslims from around the world are heading to Syria. It's why Tunisian girls are entering into temporary marriages with dozens of jihadists and coming home pregnant. It's why suicide bombers just killed 78 people at a church in Pakistan. And it's why Muslims in Al-Shabaab are so desperate to prove their sincerity by slaughtering unbelievers. Nothing to see anywhere around the globe. Show is over. Surely Allah has bought of the believers their persons and their property for this, that they shall have the garden. They fight in Allah's way, so they slay and are slain. Terrorists aren't going to stop obeying Allah just because our leaders have marshmallows where their vertebrae should be. So until we get our minds around the Quranic definition of a true believer and the Quranic test of true faith, we should prepare ourselves for further bad news. So don't forget to boycott Israel. This is wretched. Never be afraid to share your faith again. When you put your trust in Jesus, and the good news is, you got God's word on it. He'll forgive you and you'll go directly to heaven. Terrified. Available now at wretched.tv. Apparently, there's a pretty fine line between irony and tragedy. Welcome back to our wretched in Great Britain. All kinds of Islamic fun going on over there. A British soldier, Lee Rigby, has his head cut off by a Muslim. <laughs> Just a one-off, not a problem, folks. Train bombings where innocent British people are killed by Muslim terrorists. What do we do? Yawn. Virtually nothing. Islamic mosques dot the British landscape where inside their imams teach violence and that they should be slaying the Jew and the infidel. That's you and me, Christian. The response from the British government? Well, according to their prime minister, Islam is nothing but a wonderful religion. How ironic, or is it tragic, that this is how they feel, however, about Christians. My name is Andy. Uh, I'm uh, a street preacher and I've been working for the Open Air Mission, which was founded in 1853. And I preach in various places and particularly in Gainsborough once a month for an hour. Uh, I've been coming here for about 10 years. About a year ago, the council sent me a letter saying that uh, they wanted to stop me from preaching. Uh, otherwise, they'd call the police if I came because uh, they've had some complaints and uh, uh, they, they just didn't want me there. They, they said that I'm, that I, that I'm be causing offence, uh, breaking laws, uh, but they couldn't tell me exactly what laws that I've been breaking. So what I decided to do, that I knew they couldn't stop me preaching, and I started to record what, uh, uh, what I was saying so that if there's any comeback, I can say exactly what I said. Uh, one day I was preaching uh, normally, and uh, I was approached after a certain time by a couple of police officers who told me, could I have a word with you, sir? He's done everything necessary. Hello there. Hi, yeah. Can we have a quick word with you? You certainly can, sir. The police came and told me that I was 
breaking bylaws uh, by using my display board, so I asked them what I was doing wrong. Yeah, there is a bylaw, I need to. Yeah. Well, we don't have well, we don't. Well, so why are you moving me then? Because at the moment I'm moving you because you cause an offence. What offence am I causing? I've had now two people come up to me and say they cause an offence. In what way? Right. Well, what Making way? homophobic comments. I haven't Shall said anything about homosexuals at all. Uh, after much discussion, they uh, said that my board was a problem and that I had to take the board down, my display board down. And so I agreed to do that for sake of, because we were going around in circles, and I took it away. But I wanted to make it clear that as far as they were concerned, I was still okay to carry on preaching. You can't stop you preaching. What right. we've got to try and balance out here is there's a very fine line, mm. and we're getting calls that you're preaching, when well, you're preaching what? is homophobic. I, I, I can't see how you, you, you I mean, that is a lie. Right. Well, Have you got any false lies? Right, no. What I'm trying to do is give you this advice. Now, if these yeah. people are going to continue wrecking complex, and we have to investigate that, which will involve yeah. taking okay. statements from them. Well, it's no longer a crime to even say that homosexuality is a sin. It's not a crime. Well, is it? That's probably going to fall under Section 5 of Public Order. No, it isn't, actually. No, because I've got the oh. Section 5 of the Public yeah. Order Act here. Well, I understand the Section 5 of Public Order Act. That would cause harassment, alarm and distress to people. And if you're saying that, that's a sin, then I, I, if I was gay, I'd be quite offended by that. Mm. Saying homosexuality is a sin could cause somebody harm. <laughs> As opposed to bombs and decapitations. It's, it's absolutely ludicrous. How do we respond to this? Well, before we respond with a knee-jerk reaction or emotionally, might I suggest we run back to our holy book to see what it says. What are we to do? Live peaceably among men as much as it is incumbent upon us and make disciples. While it would appear that government leaders, either intentionally or willingly, unwillingly, who knows, they seem to be sticking their head into the Islamic sand, we know that a military cure is not going to fix a religious problem. This is a problem of the heart, and there is only one cure for that, and that is the cure of the gospel. Perhaps it's time, dear Christian, that we take a look at what is going on globally and we get reinvigorated the way the missionaries of the 19th century did and we go and we make disciples of all nations, even Islamic nations. Until tomorrow, serve your king. Hundreds of wretched people are presently sponsoring Tomorrow Club's Bible Camps for Kids weekly in places like Moldova, Ukraine, and Russia. Russia is one of the most restricted nations when it comes to doing gospel work, but the Tomorrow Clubs, they have dozens of Tomorrow Club camps in Russia. We need your help. Would you please sponsor a Tomorrow Club? Every week, the kids hear the gospel. They hear repentance and faith. If you would like to make a difference in a small village in Russia where we can get the gospel in, please visit tomorrowclubs.org. Know this, your money will be used wisely. They run things exceedingly tight in an effort to bring the gospel to more villages. That's where you come in. Would you please think about sponsoring a Tomorrow Club in Russia? It could make all the difference in that nation. Tomorrowclubs.org.